uh, Western Australia chapter. On behalf of my colleagues, current chair and vice chair of the you know, IES in 2020, I would like to welcome to all of you, especially our uh, distinguished uh, speaker, Professor Yang Shi. First of all, I would like to quickly introduce our speaker and then he will uh, start uh, his presentation. All right, so Professor Yang Shi received his Bachelor of Science and PhD degree in Mechanical Engineering and Automatic Control from Northwestern Polytechnic University, Zhang, China, in 1994 and 1998, respectively, and a PhD degree in Electrical and Computer Engineering from the University of Alberta, Canada, in 20, uh, 2005. From 2005 to 2009, he was an assistant professor and associate professor in Department of Mechanical Engineering, University of Saskatchewan in Canada. In 2009, he joined uh, the University of Victoria and now he is a professor in Department of Mechanical Engineering, University of Victoria, Canada. His current research interests include networked and distributed system, model predictive control, cyber physical system, robotics and mechatronics, navigation and control of autonomous systems, and energy systems application. He is the vice president of the conference activity IEEE IES and the chair uh, of the IEEE IES. Technical Committee on Industrial Cyber Physical Systems. Currently, he is a co editor in chief for IEEE Transactions on Industrial Electronics. He also serves as the associate editor for Automatica, IEEE Transaction, Automatic Control, and so on. Okay, it's again our pleasure to have Professor Yang Shi. If you are ready, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the very nice uh, introduction and thanks for the invitation. Uh, so just in case uh, of any network uh, uh, congestion problem this morning, uh, I recorded my presentation. So I'd like to share uh, my screen right now. Thank you very much. So give me just uh, one second. This uh, presentation online. Uh, so today, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for attending uh, the webinar. Uh, it's my great honor uh, to be invited by the West Australia IEEE IES chapter uh, to uh, give this uh, presentation online. Uh, so today, uh, my talk is on advanced model predictive control framework for autonomous intelligent mechatronic systems. So I will first briefly introduce uh, the main design challenges about the AIMS, Autonomous Intelligent Mechatronic Systems in general, and then point out and summarize some, uh, especially the challenges from the con controls perspective. And then I'd like to propose to design the model predictive control for the applications of uh, AIMS. And in the last part, I mainly uh, introduced uh, several of the uh, recent uh, applications of uh, MPC to advanced uh, autonomous intelligent mechatronic systems. So we see that uh, in many of the applications, including the Internet of Things or industrial cyber physical systems, autonomous vehicles, autonomous vehicles, and uh, unmanned. Uh, autonomous vehicles or driving and smart grid. So large scale smart grid or large scale cyber physical systems. So actually inside the large scale systems, uh, we can always find the specific applications of uh, mechatronic systems. In other words, mechatronic systems are actually playing a fundamental role in building up a large scale cyber physical system. So specifically AIMS, lights in the intersection of the following disciplines, including the application requirements from unmanned systems, robotics, and also from the theoretical study areas, including system and control of multi-agent uh, cooperative control systems, network and distributed systems, and machine learning, and so on and so forth. So 
Mechatronic system can find broad applications in unmanned aerial vehicles, UAV, and marine vehicles, ground robotics, space exploration, smart transportation, manufacturing, additive manufacturing, and even smart healthcare systems. So in order to develop the autonomous intelligent mechatronic systems, uh, we need to study you know, not only the theoretical features, but also some uh, application uh, consideration. So in terms of a control theory, so many of the control strategies have been successfully applied to all kinds of uh, mechatronics applications. And in terms of uh, application, so mechatronic system has been applied to develop the quad rotors, mobile robots, and some other type of uh, autonomous vehicles. And we need to consider the design of the navigation and control of these systems. And further, many of the small scale mechatronic systems being integrated together, they can build up uh, the cyberphysical system called CPS. So within the CPS, relatively larger scale skill, uh, we need to consider the cyber attack detection and isolation leading to the fault tolerant control, secure and resilient controller design, and how to preserve the privacy. So this tends to be a very important uh, consideration in the lower days cyber physical system development. So looking into the IEEE, uh, ISA standard, ISA 95, so this gives us a big picture of a uh, cyber physical system. It consists of the lower level production processes and further sensors and actuations control system design and interlocking. And to the upper level, we see the application of the SCADA systems or even the larger scale um, MES and ERP design. So again, within this uh, cyber physical system development, so everywhere we will see the application of the mechatronic systems. So mechatronic systems are playing a building block role in building up a large scale systems. So they are also referred to many of the possible things, including uh, the closed loop system, small scale, a pump, human worker, robot, machine, and, uh, and, and laptop controller or microcontroller, or even the smartphone as a device. So if you are interested in more details of uh, cyber physical systems, uh, you can refer to uh, the research book published in uh, 2015, and a recent uh, survey paper or perspective paper published in 2017 together with my uh, colleagues in HV Industrial Electronics Magazine. So, but today our focus is on how to consider the design challenges of uh, AIMS, and then we can clarify, you know, how to look for a most suitable control strategy to deal with the control system design for enabling the application of AIMS. So number one, in order to control a mechatronic system, so first of all, we need to consider accommodating physical constraints, not only, not only on the actuators, but also on the involved system states, like the velocity, acceleration, or even temperature of a dynamic system. And number two, uh, we need to realize the robust control, and also the controller should achieve certain level of resilience against unknown uncertainties, noises, and even cyber attacks. Number three, we need to design our controller for the mechatronic system in order to achieve comprehensive and hierarchical tasks, because in order to operate and run any type of autonomous vehicle, so the, the mission and the tasks will be of the comprehensive and hierarchical feature, including the high level Post planning and obstacle avoidance, and further the tracking or pass following or dynamic positioning. So we actually need to consider how to realize this uh, comprehensive uh, tasks. And number four, finally, uh, we aim to achieve certain level optimal performance according to our proposed design objectives and the tasks. So summarizing all the uh, expected uh, outcomes or, or features of the controller design for electronic systems, we need to proactively look for a appropriate uh, control strategy 
to design the controller. So in here, our objective is to develop a very unified control framework for dealing with the control system analysis and the synthesis of its controller system design. So in this case, considering the expected features that the controller for electronic system should have, model predictive control stands out as a quite promising solution. So this is mainly due to MPC's uh, very attractive features. So first of all, it can very systematically and explicitly handle all the physical constraints. That's exactly corresponding to the first requirement of a mechatronic system control, considering the control input saturation, considering the state constraints in real time. And secondly, MPC provides a very flexible design framework, which will be uh, discussed uh, uh, very soon in a few seconds. And MPC is actually optimization center strategy. And therefore, it naturally provides the suboptimal or optimal performance. And MPC provides forward-looking prediction. So this feature can enable us to uh, tackle many of the design challenges that will be encountered in mechatronics or motion control system design. And also MPC does provide the inherent robustness and let us know we need to proactively design the robust control for enhanced robustness, but naturally MPC itself already has certain level of inherent robustness. This is exactly what we want in de designing any type of electronics control systems. So there is a very natural analogy between the chess play and the MPC strategy. So just a few words on, on the chess play. Any player will do the prediction in their minds, uh, not only producing the current strategy to move the uh, to move to make the current move, but also will make some uh, future predictions. And then at the current time, the player will just um, make one move in this uh, in this in his turn. And then further, it will turn to the opponent's uh, 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 decision. And then this opponent uh, chess player will be very fastly running in his mind certain type of uh, opposition based on the observed the, the current situation scenario, and then making a, a decision, including the current uh, move and also some uh, predicted moves. So this is exactly what model predictive control will be doing. So let's take a look at this uh, diagram at current time instant K. So MPC controller will run the optimization problem generating a sequence of a control inputs. So here, if we talk about the single input, single output control uh, system, and then classical control strategies will just uh, implement or and, and generate a current control input signal, which is a scalar signal, but MPC different from traditional strategies will be will be generating a sequence of a control profile, which is a vector in this case. And then the signal to be sent to the activator to implement the control input will be a scalar. That's the first element of this vector. So therefore you see at time instant k, a, a sequence of a control input profiles have been generated but only the first time in the intervals control input will be sent to drive the actuator. And then moving to the second time in K plus one, the similar procedure of, a, of a solving the optimization problem will be repeated. So the first segment, segment of the vector will be sent and to the actuator and uh, implemented. So therefore, model predictive control is also called a receding horizon control strategy. So how to generate uh, a, the control input predictions, the, the vector or the profile. So this is generated by solving the formulated constant optimization problem. So you can see here, so state constant and control input constant can be very systematically and conveniently incorporated into the constant opposition problem. If the, this uh, constant opposition problem will be giving us a feasible solution and then the generated the first element within this UK star will be sent to control the system leading to the closed loop system. And then all we need to analyze is to figure out under what conditions the closed loop system will be stable and to satisfy some other required features and characteristics. 
So you can take a look at this uh, very classical uh, control system diagram. The sensor will be measuring some uh, uh, states of, of the dynamic system, transmitting the signal over the internet to a controller. So this controller will be solving the formulated optimization problem, generating a sequence of uh, control input profile, not only for the current time instant, but also making a prediction for for next time instant, for next next time instant, and so on and so forth, depending on the prediction horizon we specify in advance. However, even though this multiple controller generates a control profile, which is a vector for the single input, single output scenario, but only the first element will be sent over the internet to the actuator to drive the to drive the system. So this animation diagram clearly shows how conventional classical model predictive control actually works. So in the past 10 years, we have been uh, striving to uh, producing and, and you know, conducting research on proposing an MPC framework for autonomous intelligent electronic systems. In order to achieve this, on the theoretical side, we need to solve uh, many uh, related uh, theory uh, problems or issues. For example, we need to design robust MPC to proactively consider the uh, avoidable uncertainties, uh, disturbances, and noises. And we need to design the distributed MPC for a large scale interconnected dynamics or the multi agent system. For example, if we have a group of uh, uh, drones uh, working together, cooperatively flying, so how to design the distributed strategy in terms of uh, model predictive control. And we also studied the theoretical uh, Neapolis-based MPC, uh, primarily aiming to ensuring the stability of the cost of the system. And further, in order to reduce the uh, computational complexity and also the communication load, uh, we studied the event-based uh, uh, MPC, meaning that instead of uh, theoretically conducting the optimization, solving the model predictive control optimal uh, problem, optimal control problem, uh, we can actually run and trigger the, the solver to, to tackle the optimal control problem a priori. Uh, depending on the needs, we never need it. We just uh, trigger the controller. And then if we not need it, we can let the controller to, to have a rest. So this can greatly reduce the computational complexity and also save the limited bandwidth for not tra transmitting the information periodically. So this is called event trigger uh, control and, and the, uh, or the self-trigger control. So also we have developed a theory on network-based MPC, uh, considering how to tackle the network-induced uh, constraints like time delays, uh, packet dropouts, and, and so on. And switched MPC because many practical systems are actually operated uh, in term, among several uh, different uh, modes or different uh, uh, task, tasks. So this naturally needs to the mathematical model of using uh, switched dynamics to characterize your practical uh, system and the overall mission completion. So therefore, we need to design the theoretical switched MPC strategy for such a type of a system. And more importantly, we need to uh, consider the design of the fast algorithms uh, to achieve the real-time implementation. So just, just imagine if you're going to implement the model predictive control uh, to the motion control of a robot, and then the sampling period can be as, as small as a 0 0.1 second or 0 0.01 seconds. So therefore it does require uh, the optimal control problem to be solved within such a short period of time. Otherwise, the real-time implementation cannot be uh, successful. And if we consider uh, the uh, new application, in which case the mathematical model is not always available or the mathematical model will be subject to some uh, uncertainties or parametric uncertainties or unknown parameters. So in this case, we need to develop the adaptive and the learning MPC and further, if we consider some uh, stochastic uh, environment, like you know, the constraints will not be all with the hard constraints. So sometimes the, the constraint can be characterized by probabilistic sense. So in, in words, so if the constraint can be satisfied with you know 95%, 
And then this naturally needs to a setup called stochastic MPC scheme. And secure MPC uh, is very important for applying MPC to large scale systems uh, in the cyber physical system setup uh, because cyber attacks will be a very important issue we have to consider. So putting this uh, all together, so by solving this uh, theoretical issues, uh, we can possibly apply the appropriate MPC schemes or strategies, algorithms, uh, into uh, a specific application, including aerial vehicles or drones or a group of uh, drones or multi multiple agent systems and marine vehicles or uh, autonomous surface vehicles, uh, ground robotics, and some other type of uh, robotics applications. So in order to apply MPC to the AIMS system, uh, we need to uh, have a strong support from the theoretical research and specifically in order to apply the algorithm to control a real-time system, uh, we need to make a very good combination of several of these uh, strategies together to achieve our objective. So let's take a look at uh, some of the challenges we have to consider uh, when designing the MPC for electronic system applications. So number one, many of the electronics applications nowadays are actually placed and operated in a network environment. So therefore, the network induced constraints must be considered and compensated. First, it comes from the random time delays. It's time varying, it's random. And we may also suffer from the packet dropouts, and this will be occurring in a random style. So the information may be transmitted and may not be transmitted to the controller or the actuator in time. And limited bandwidth, because many of the information will be transmitted over the limited uh, network. So therefore, uh, how to make full use of the very limited bandwidth to reduce the communication load that should be a consideration in the, our design. And also because there are so many sensors, actuators, and microcontrollers are interconnected over the internet or the network. So the synchronization issue will be considered because not all of them are always synchronized in terms of the unified clock. So in this case, if asynchronization would be the case, we need to consider the controller design to accommodate this uh, possible asynchronization. And this shows the packet dropouts. So information may not be successfully delivered. So in this case, if the actuator does not receive the control signal uh, input or command in real time, and then the closed loop system does not know how to work, right? So we need to uh, provide a very elaborated uh, or dedicated uh, control system design for such application. And if the information can be delivered successfully, so it may be subject to some time delay. We know that in control system, so even though the time delay might be minor or tiny, it still can de degrade the, the control system performance or even make the system unstable. And we also comment that for dealing with the time delay or packet dropouts from the sensor to the controller versus the time delay from the controller to the actuator. So they are different. So in order to compensate for both channel time delays, we need to apply different strategies. Uh, we need to develop a new type of methods to deal with the, the to deal with this uh, time delays in both channels simultaneously. So here we quote a famous uh, thing in China to describe why this uh, left hand side time delay from the controller to actuator will be so hard or it will be even harder to be compensated because uh, this time delay on this uh, yellow block will be occurring after the control system generated uh, the signal. So in words, after the controller generates a control command being sent out, the time delay will be occurring and observed afterwards. So therefore it's, a, it's not very easy to compensate this uh, time delay that will be future uh, generated. So the same as a general in the field won't be controlled by the order of the king. So in this case, so we need to develop a new methods to implement a very efficient uh, compensation for time delay. Number two, robustness. 
in any type of a control, no matter what kind of a control strategy we are going to apply for our applications in instrumentation, in control system, robotics, and so on and so forth, we always need to consider the robustness uh, guarantee. So generally speaking, robust control will consider under the worst case of estimated uncertainties or disturbances, we still need to guarantee the performance of the designed control system. So in MPC application to the Mactronic system, we also need to proactively consider uh, efficient, robust control, robust model to predictive control to guarantee the efficient robustness. So this is a one of the robust constraint uh, methodology we proposed uh, several years ago, and it's now becoming one of the uh, important methods uh, in designing robust MPC. So it does have some a certain uh, conservative list, uh, but it's quite easy to follow and it's easy to implement. It does not increase the computational efficiency and also it provides certain level of robustness to the design controller. And number three, in the CPS applications, cyber physical system applications, resilience and security will be quite important because in any closed loop system, when we have the integration of the of the uh, physical layer and, and the cyber domain. And then the information transmission might be subject to some uh, cyber attacks, including uh, DOS, including the deception attacks or some other type of uh, cyber attacks. So in this case, we need to design a controller to achieve the expected resilience and the security. So this is quite important for the current uh, applications of a uh, Mactronic system. So considering all the analysis, so our objective here is to design the robust and the resilient MPC framework for autonomous intelligent Mactronic system. So keeping all the three key requirements in mind, uh, we need to uh, deal with the, this uh, uh, generalized uh, uh, system diagram uh, by identifying the model as close as possible, as accurate as possible, and, and then based on the mathematical model, we can develop the model predictive control as a unified strategy and framework, and then introducing some advanced optimization solver uh, to solve the formulated uh, constant optimization problem, generating the control commands to stabilize or achieve the tracking uh, control objective for Mactronic systems. So within this uh, generalized diagram, we have a lot of things to do. We need to develop uh, many algorithms to achieve our task. So in general, we need to answer the following theoretical questions. So how to rigorously analyze the important properties after applying MPC to the network the dynamic Mactronic systems, specifically including feasibility of the formulated uh, optimization problem. So every time instant we are going to solve the optimization problem, constant optimization problem, so how can we always guarantee this, uh, this uh, optimization problem will give us a feasible solution? So this is the first question we have to answer and we have to guarantee uh, uh, under certain derived conditions. And if this problem can be answered, and then second question we need to answer and address is, how can we guarantee the stability of the resulting closed loop system? And by this analysis, we aim to develop the very explicit relationship between the system properties as expected with the designable control parameters. This will give us a guideline to choose appropriate parameter for real-time implementation. And lastly, one very practical question we need to address is, so how can we assure the optimization algorithm fast enough for real-time implementation in Mactronics? because in Mactronics, motion control requires the sampling period to be very small. So simply speaking, we need to solve this uh, optimization problem within the given short time period, 0.1 seconds or 0.01 second. So this is about the fastness of the proposed algorithm. So in the past 20 years, uh, if we make a summary of the published literature on model predictive control, so probably I missed some other literature because I only use the keyword MPC to, to do the search. Uh, you can see very uh, clearly in the past 10 years, there, there was a sharp increase uh, in the research trend of studying and investigating 
model predictive control and its corresponding applications. So let me report some of the uh, representative applications uh, of applying MPC to uh, Mechtronic system applications in my lab. So in 2017, we published uh, two research books on uh, MPC on the left-hand side, robust receiving horizontal control for network and distributed nonlinear uh, systems. So this is the first uh, a book uh, on MPC for specifically network and distributed dynamic systems. And the second one is on the application of advanced control and op optimal operation for combined cooling, heating, and power system. It's a it's application of uh, advanced control and optimization to uh, energy efficient uh, systems. So overall, our objective is to develop MPC as a unified control solution for advanced uh, uh, AI MS. So including the application of MPC to uh, drones or a group of uh, drones as a team uh, to autonomous vehicles, uh, to autonomous marine uh, systems, including underwater vehicles and also uh, surface vehicles or as a team together. We also consider the, the collaboration between a group of uh, drones and a group of uh, underwater vehicles as well. So MPC, due to its uh, very flexible optimization uh, structure and configuration, it can be potentially uh, regarded as a unified framework to implement its algorithm to control all the listed uh, representative uh, dynamic systems. So the first uh, uh, work is on applying MPC to autonomous uh, uh, quad rotors. So uh, we recently published two papers and several others. So in this work, uh, we need to implement the tracking control in the real system, real flight system. And then we have the high level controller uh, to run the, the optimal optimization based MPC. And then we have the you know, sensors, GPS, IMU equipped with the quad rotor to provide the feedback uh, position and the velocity information. And then we send the velocity reference signal to the autopilot on the quad rotor. So formulating the problem as an MPC setup. So we see that uh, the cost of function. So it will incorporate the tracking error into the cost of function. And then the first two terms are uh, very similar to the traditional LQR control quadratic cost. And then the third term is added here is called the terminal uh, cost to achieve the stabilization, to achieve the stability for the closed loop system. And then the, all the constraints can be added into the constant opposition problem. So we see that here, the, the real challenge is to develop a fast opposition solver or algorithm to solve the constant opposition problem within the very short period of time. So based on the previous work on the uh, CGMRES algorithm, uh, we further developed the enhanced uh, algorithm to specifically deal with the in inequality constraint because uh, in our application, inequality constraints are always encountered and need to be incorporated. So we can see uh, how fast this uh, new algorithm can achieve. So compared to the traditional uh, classical uh, solvers, S2P and IP algorithms, uh, you, can, you can see that in both of the cases, so our proposed algorithm can solve the problem within 0 0.0022 uh, seconds, uh, which is a significantly increased the speed. So this capital N refers to uh, prediction steps. So even by increasing the prediction horizon to, to be 30, so we can still solve the problem within 0.006 seconds. So this can very well successfully enable us to implement the algorithm in the real time flight. So the flight path that showed us that the tracking performance can be satisfied uh, very well. So as I mentioned earlier, fast implementation will be playing a instrumental role in applying MPC algorithms to any type of um, electronics applications. So this is a second example. We propose to integrate a visual serving uh, with robust MPC. So if we have a drone uh, equipped with the, with the camera, so 
under the uh, environment without having the GPS signal, we need to make use of the uh, visual serving uh, images information as a feedback. So in this case, our contribution lies in that we propose to include the visibility constraint into the MPC framework. So again, this is uh, due to the flexible optimization structure configuration of MPC. We can incorporate many practical constraints into this uh, framework. So by incorporating the image as a feedback, and then we can uh, implement the, the flight control for the port rotor. So this has been designed in terms of uh, uh, two loops as uh, many others uh, quad rotors are, are implementing. The outer loop, we are using the MPC-based, uh, image-based visual serving controller, and the inner loop is uh, implementing uh, the local PID-based uh, attitude and altitude controller. So the connected uh, visual information will be sent back over internet to the controller. So the controller will be operating and solving the opposition problem and sending the commands to the, the port rotor to implement uh, the tracking uh, objective. So under this unified framework, we can see that uh, not only you know, solving some uh, traditional problems, control problems, uh, if we have a new requirement, like including the visual serving into the system. So MPC as a unified framework can very conveniently and systematically uh, provide a solution. We also apply the multiplicity control to a type of uh, autonomous uh, ground robotics, the two-wheeled uh, ground robotics. So in this case, we specifically focus on solve the problem on the mathematical model may not be always accurate and precise enough. So in this case, we need to propose the so-called adaptive and learning robust MPC framework to tackle the problem. Because in many applications, the mathematical model is a way or has discrepancy compared to the actual physical system. So in this case, the adaptive MPC strategy will incorporate an estimator to online identify the model parameters and, and then the update in the model will be used to solve the optimization problem leading to the adaptive MPC framework. So here, uh, in order to further enhance the performance of the learning or adaptive based MPC, we need to incorporate the robust strategy like the tube based MPC to improve the robustness. So from this figure, so sorry, we don't have enough time to, to introduce in more details, but in general, the idea is even there will be some uncertainties exist and disturbances uh, introduced to the system. And also, even though there will be some uh, estimation error or identification error on the parameter theta to be estimated. So considering this uh, uh, estimation error as a certain type of uh, disturbance to the system. So we are going to design the adaptive and the robust MPC to be still able to tolerate towards against uh, this estimation error. So the way to tackle this is to design some tubes as shown by these uh, figures. And then as long as uh, the disturbance will be within certain level, not exceeding the worst case upper bound, we can always guarantee the generated uh, state trajectory to always remain within this uh, tube as described. So this needs to a further adaptive learning based robust MPC strategy which suits very well for the needs of the Mactronics applications. So this is a, a resulting constant optimization problem. And then you see that not only we incorporate the parameter estimation into the scheme, but also we introduce some uh, uh, state tubes, new tubes methods to enhance the robustness of the proposed scheme. It can be generalized to be applied to many types of uh, Mactronics dynamic systems. So this is an algorithm description for the uh, experiments and experimental and uh, simulation results showed the effectiveness of this type of method. So finally, uh, I'd like to very briefly introduce our some applications of a uh, uh, model predictive control for autonomous underwater vehicles and autonomous surface vehicles, marine applications. So in this case, not only we are going to uh, solve the tracking control for the vehicle itself, but also we can incorporate the path planning 
into the opposition framework. So just to recall that MPC is an opposition-based strategy and path planning actually is also a opposition-based uh, uh, procedure. And we propose to have to, to design an integrated uh, opposition framework for dealing with the past planning and further the tracking or past following or dynamic positioning and so on. So uh, this way we can we can regard model predictive control as a unified framework uh, to deal with the related engineering opposition problems. And in addition to this, uh, we have developed some other type of uh, uh, MPC strategies specifically for the underwater vehicle applications like the past planning or how to improve the uh, implementation efficiency, uh, increasing the uh, uh, solving the opposition problem of speed, and also uh, to provide the visual serving into MPC for underwater vehicle applications. So this gives us uh, uh, the brief summary of uh, today's talk. And in the future, uh, we believe that MPC should be developed towards a secure the service for autonomous intelligent vehicles. So secure requirement comes from the cyber physical system uh, setup in any of the application scenario of future electronic system into the cyber and physical domain interaction. So security will be an important issue we need to offer. And further, controller design may not be, you know, always following the traditional engineering uh, philosophy. In the future, controller design will be a type of a service provided to our industrial customers. In terms of the tactical development, we aim to integrate and combine the fast opposition algorithms together with a dynamic controller system design and analysis. So that's a so-called all-in-one design. So currently, you know, researchers are studying opposition and some others are focusing on controller design. However, they are actually just uh, in one uh, umbrella. And hierarchical MPC for cyber physical systems, that's, my, uh, that's our ongoing research direction for dealing with a large scale cyber physical system we have to propose a hierarchical structure for modeling the large scale system and then accordingly provide a solution to design MPC for such a hierarchical large scale CPS system. So, this is the end for today's talk. I'd like to quickly acknowledge uh, funding uh, agencies supporting our research, including NSERC, Canada Foundation for Innovation, and MATEX, and University of Victoria, ISPIC uh, Institute of Energy, Integrated Energy System, and many other collaborating uh, companies and industrial partners. Thank you so much for your uh, patience. I would be very happy to answer uh, any questions. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Shi, for your very interesting, insightful presentation. I enjoyed a lot. So, uh, it's time for our audiences to ask their question. Please feel free to ask your question. Thank you. I've got two questions. If... Yes, please, Esan. Yeah, Esan's here from AIMA. Yeah. So thanks for, for the presentation. Very interesting topic. Um, I've got two questions. Uh, the first one is, what's the normal time interval for each step of MPC in robotics applications? I'm just curious to know. Uh, yeah, so uh, normally if you are uh, talking about the flight control of quadrotor, so normally we operate the sampling period at uh, like 0 0.01 second. Uh, I, I believe uh, for robotics application, it's uh, it's uh, almost at the same level, or sometimes a 0 0.001 second for uh, faster dynamics uh, of motion control systems. Uh, so therefore, uh, even though MPC model predict control has found you know very uh, uh, you know successful applications in process control system like uh, oil industry uh, process control. 
because those systems are of a rather longer sampling period. So solving the optimization problem uh, would not be a concern. Uh, but for robotics application, uh, in order to implement MPC, uh, you know, the first uh, uh, bottleneck problem is uh, to find out a very efficient uh, solver uh, for the formulated optimization problem. Uh, but in the past five to 10 years, uh, robotics areas, motion control systems are uh, applying MPC. Uh, you know, according to the report from uh, uh, some uh, robotics companies, uh, and also autonomous driving applications. Uh, we already see uh, many reported results on on the successful application of a uh, model predict control. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I think that's a very short period of time in terms of the interval. So, yeah, the fast MPC would help, and I guess the linear uh, optimization would help a lot. Right. And yeah. My, my my second question is depending on on the time interval mm -hmm. of the case, so we could have some observation to shrink the horizon, to to fit in the MPC model for the for the next time for the next interval. So definitely, as you said, there could be some delays or even the cyber attack to alter the inputs mm -hmm. or even the loss of comms. So how do you think the estimate, the other estimate potentially coming from out of the M MPC model? Uh, could be integrated in such applications to improve the the performance of the control model. I'm I'm actually talking about another layer of estimator. If if you just go back to your slide 34, mm -hmm. probably. So mm -hmm. there is a estimator over there, and mm -hmm. in such applications, if there the delay is significant or the loss of comms. So do you think? another layer of estimator or predictor can help, or is there any work has done in this space? Uh, yes, so uh, when we're talking about the uh, model accuracy, uh, I think it uh, plays an instrumental role in determining the actual performance of uh, application of uh, MPC. Uh, normally, uh, model predictor control assume that the model is uh, perfectly known, uh, and, and then uh, in the next uh, uh, step, we apply the robust MPC, considering some uncertainties. And further in our work, uh, we have been working on developing the robust and uh, adaptive MPC by integrating the estimator, as you just mentioned. So if we incorporate the online uh, system identifier or estimator to try to update the model parameters uh, in real time, so this can, uh, you know, further enhance the uh, adaptivity of the scheme towards the parameter uncertainties. And also further, uh, if we have uh, even unknown nonlinear functions uh, that's involved in the model dynamics, so we can introduce a, a learning based approaches like reinforcement learning or some other type of uh, approximation using neural networks to enhance the online estimation approximation of uh, the adaptive control. So uh, I believe, uh, you know, adaptive and then learning a uh, model predict control will be uh, very important uh, in dealing with the inaccurate uh, mathematical model. Thanks. Yeah, sure. And I think I think in, in terms of the real time uh, applications for, for the adaptive control, if yeah, I understand, so we get we look at the real time data. So if we lose some of those data, so what are the backup plan for that? I mean, if we've uh, got any estimators other than you know the basic one in the MPC model, do we, um, you know, does he have any any other model to to estimate it, or is the same model? But it's, we're trying to for those period of time, we're trying to retune the same model. Uh, that's a very interesting question and very insightful question. Uh, thanks. Uh, I think uh, in reality, definitely as shown in the one of the previous slides. So when we are connecting the data from the wireless uh, communication channel, or even uh, from local uh, connection or measurements of the of the data, so we may uh, subject to some data packet dropouts, right? So this needs to 
sometimes a random uh, package dropouts. So in this case, we need to provide a online estimator dealing with this uh, intermittent uh, information loss. So, so in this case, uh, thanks to the MPC feature, uh, because MPC can do some prediction of the state information. So if during the measurement of the state information using some sensors, the data will be lost, and then we can make use of some uh, uh, the predicted state from the mathematical model uh, of MPC to, to provide a compensation to some extent. So we ever studied this type of uh, methodology or, or approaches uh, and then incorporate this idea with the adaptive control to try to enhance the estimation identification uh, of the model. And on the other hand, so uh, another uh, research idea or frontier is to incorporate the model predictive control with uh, the digital twin uh, mechanism. So when running the model predictive control in real time, uh, we can also operate the digital twin model. Uh, hopefully the model can simulate the uh, true system as close as possible. In this case, if there would be any uh, information loss or due to some uh, DOS attack, so this uh, digital twin model can provide uh, some compensation. So in this case, definitely this uh, compensated the signal uh, for the missed uh, data uh, is has a discrepancy compared to the true data. But uh, we can use some uh, robust control uh, tactic to try to suppress the negative effect due to the mismatch between the compensated data information uh, versus the true data and information. So therefore, adaptive and robust mechanisms are closely co collaborating together, providing uh, the satisfactory performance. So in summary, uh, if there would be some uh, information uh, intermittent uh, uh, miss or, or loss, so theoretically we still can find and develop some algorithm to make the compensation. Yeah, thanks Thank you. so much. Thanks so much, Professor. Yep, that's me. Thank you, Professor Shi, for your answers. Is there any other question? Uh, yes, may I have one question? So yes, first of all, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Professor Shi, for the excellent talk, and very good to see you again after such a long time. Uh, Thanks. Um, it was a very excellent talk. My question is mainly about the topic of distributed MPC, which you gave some examples, for example, with the uh, cars. Do you think how much we are far away from having really uh, cars driving autonomously using this uh, distributed uh, MPC control technique? Uh, or do you have any knowledge about the industries that are testing or implementing these things? Uh, so thank you. Thank you uh, for the very nice question. Uh, yeah, same here. Uh, very exciting to, to see you again online. Hopefully we can meet with each other in person in the very near future. Sure, thanks. Uh, regarding, regarding the distributed implementation, uh, from the theoretical side, we have uh, developed some uh, uh, distributed the robust MPC uh, methods for controlling a multiple agent system, uh, including the vehicle platoon or ASV, autonomous surface vehicle platoon uh, setup. Uh, and in experiments, in the lab-based experiment, we, we can do some simulation. We can test uh, some of the collaborative control of uh, uh, ground robotics or ASV systems. Uh, but uh, if we uh, talk about the autonomous vehicles, uh, really the, the you know driverless uh, cars uh, in my lab, we, we haven't done this kind of uh, application research. But uh, according to my knowledge, uh, one of my students group, uh, you know, he already started to do some uh, a simple tasks of uh, small scale uh, autonomous uh, vehicles uh, using the distributed uh, MPC uh, methods. Uh, I think it's quite a uh, promising and even for the autonomous vehicles industry uh, from some of the reports uh, published in their website, I, I noticed uh, some of uh, the results of applying model predictive control. So it seems that MPC is uh, also welcomed by by related industry. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, perfect, perfect. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks. Thank you, Parha. Thank you, Professor Shi. Any more question? Okay, I'd like to ask uh, two questions, Professor Shi. <laughs> sure, First of sure. all, yeah, thanks uh, again for your very insightful presentation. First question about the, uh, you know, two main research problems you also indicated in your pre presentation and from the perspective of some conservative control systems, you know, community, they also uh, always, you know, indicating these two main issues with the, uh, you know, MPC. First of all, stability of the closed loop system and the second one, feasibility of the optimization problem and which cannot always be guaranteed. So I would like to know your, uh, you know, uh, idea and your comments uh, on this general question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, your question is related to the very insightful investigation of a theoretical study on model predictive control. So because a model predictive control is a optimization uh, based method and is performing the uh, solving the optimization problem uh, every uh, periodical time. So uh, it's a receding horizon uh, magnetism. So every uh, fixed period of time, we need to solve the optimization problem uh, generating the control sequence. So therefore, uh, generally the, the generated control input signal is kind of a numerical uh, solution. Uh, so therefore, this poses some uh, uh, challenges and difficulties in analyzing uh, the closed loop uh, stability by uh, picking up the first element of the generated uh, control uh, sequence or profile for implementation. So therefore, I, I think uh, so far uh, in our theoretical study, uh, we we always try to uh, provide some uh, necessary conditions. Uh, under these conditions, uh, we can guarantee the stability of the closed loop system. So generally, normally, in order to achieve this, uh, we need to uh, do something on uh, formulating the the optimization problem. For example, number one, uh, we need to add a additional cost called the terminal cost into the objective function. So this uh, terminal cost uh, will perform uh, will serve the need of the of the proof for feasibility and stability, and also we need to add a constraint. Uh, this constraint is on constraining this uh, a terminal state. So in general, we can have a state constraint, we can have a control input signal saturation constraint, uh, but in addition, we need to normally add a constraint on the terminal state. Terminal state refers to uh, the last time instant of at the end of the prediction horizon. So at that end, uh, we need to put a constant set on this uh, state specifically. So by having both of this uh, added additional requirements to the formulated opposition problem, uh, we can successfully prove the feasibility and also the stability of, of the system. And interestingly, uh, when ensuring both of these important properties, uh, we end up with uh, establishing a set of uh, conditions. So these conditions uh, in the paper may look uh, very complicated, however, uh, they are closely related to some uh, uh, physical parameters in action for implementing the controller. Uh, for example, uh, feasibility, meaning that the opposition problem must provide a feasible solution. So it depends on the choice and design of the prediction horizon. So what's the length of the window for prediction? In, in theory, ideally, it's, uh, it's longer. the longer the better. But in practice, it may not be the case because the practical application will be subject to some uncertainties. Uh, if you make a very long prediction, considering the uncertainties, this prediction may not be accurate because it's disturbed by uncertainties. So therefore, the condition will be reflecting the dependent relation on the prediction horizon choice and also the sampling period, uh, how long time we're going to uh, redo the optimization so this is called sampling period. So this parameter is also determining the feasibility and the stability of the closed loop system. And also we have some other parameters to be designed. So all of this will be reflected from the established uh, conditions for ensuring the theoretical properties. So I, I think uh, regarding the uh, theoretical analysis, 
uh, we can uh, find the ways to to always the theoretically ensuring and proving uh, these two properties and theoretical study can provide guideline for uh, doing the test for for realizing this algorithms in in real systems because they provide a range for choosing the parameters so uh, so that's my uh, brief answer regarding the theoretical study on MPC problem. Thank, Thank you, you very much. It, it's uh, it was a really comprehensive and detailed answers, you know, considering all aspects. So my second question is uh, just to know your, uh, you know, recommendation for the off the shelf software, you know, uh, mm -hmm. that uh, include the, you know, MPC technology. There are many, you know, like mm -hmm. Akado toolkits or Kasadi and so on and so forth. I'd like mm -hmm. to know which, uh, which uh, one is more convenient for the user and facilitate the ease of mm -hmm. implementation. Uh, I think uh, uh, for a uh, theoretical study, uh, first step, we need to do some uh, simulation study to verify the algorithm. Uh, so sometimes we use a uh, MATLAB uh, fmin con function uh, to solve some uh, uh, optimization problem. And Kasadi can also be uh, used and uh, Yalip can be used. Uh, there are some uh, open source uh, solvers. And also we uh, ourselves uh, also, uh, you know, develop some uh, uh, optimization algorithm as reported in the paper, and we also make it uh, uh, open source. Uh, so uh, it's uh, it's open source on GitHub. Uh, I think for real time implementation in in that case, I think uh, we, we need to be very careful to choose the very suitable solver that can provide uh, the capability of the solving the formulated opposition problem within the short period of time for motion control system. Uh, but because uh, most of our uh, works are uh, in the lab based uh, experiments, so the mentioned the solvers uh, can can serve uh, very well. Thank you very much Thanks. for your answer. Is there mm -hmm. any question? OK, it seems that there is no more question. Thanks a lot for accepting our invitation and for your mm -hmm. fantastic talk. We hope to see you in our next, uh, you know, our next year webinars as well. Sure, sure. Thank you thank so you. much uh, for everyone uh, attending this uh, event, Vabula, and thank you very much for your, for your invitation. And yeah, we keep in touch and hopefully see you soon in person. Thank you thank very you. much. Thanks, so much. Thanks everybody for thank attending you. this uh, webinar. See you later yeah. and have a good time. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.